Termination of Contracts. This is the part in your book beginning from pages 31, 31 up to pages up to page 33. Alright, pages 31 to 33. All right, and this is all comes un under the section seven. Okay, sub section seven. Uh, title of contract uh, termination of contract. All right, seven termination of contract pages thirty one to thirty three. Okay, before I get into the right to terminate a contract, please read 7.1, 7.1 on page 31 of the book, 7.1 on page 31 of the book. Please read that. I am not talking about that in this lecture, but that is relevant, very relevant to this topic. You have to read that first, 7.1 on page 31. It deals with the fact that you can only terminate a contract when you have a right to terminate the contract. Okay, if you do not have the right to terminate the contract, you cannot terminate the contract. Right? How do you get the rights of terminating a contract? These are the four ways here in which the right to terminate a contract can arise okay can come from all right so please read 7.1 on page 31 it talks about 7.1 on page 31 it talks about if you want to terminate a contract and you want to inform the other party or parties to the contract that you want to terminate and you have the right to terminate and these other parties or party are at another location they're not in front of you they're at another location okay what is the requirement that you have to carry out in order to effectively terminate a contract and also on the uh the 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 right that to terminate a contract the right to terminate a contract is the right of one contractual party only which means that when you get the right you one party to the contract gets the right to terminate the contract okay gets the right to terminate the contract from one of these four ways any one of these four ways that gives you the right to terminate the contract you can just go ahead to terminate a contract you do not need to get the consent from the other party so put it very simply if you have the right to terminate the contract arising from any one of these four situations right and you want to terminate that because you have the right ready right for any one of these four situations, and you tell the other party hey i'm going to terminate the contract because of this because of this because of this because of this right and um and the other party says uh no I don't agree for you to terminate. I don't agree for you to terminate. Okay, the other party doesn't have the right to agree or disagree. This is what it means by terminating the contract. When you get the right to terminate the contract, this right to terminate a contract is a right of one party. You don't need the permission or consent or kamanuya from the other party to say, okay, I agree to terminate as well. You don't need that. Once you get the right from any one of these four situations, you just go ahead and terminate, inform the other party. Okay, so what are the four ways? And you was, the other thing is, I just remember I have a little asterisk here. The asterisk here refers to this kind of right to terminate a contract applies to all kinds of contract all kinds of contract okay as we proceed on to with this course and also you have done so in bus law 
you study the different kinds of contract. Right? Different kinds of contract has their own their mail, some of them. So I won't say they have. But they may have some of their own conditions to terminate that specific kind of contract as well, in addition to this. So you could say that these are the general. Okay, you could say that these are the general. I put here the general conditions. All right? Oh, I wrote, I wrote it out the, the line here. Yeah, let me put this up. Okay, you can say that these are the general conditions. All right? Whereby the right could arise to terminate the contract. All right? And therefore, it also applies to It also apply to all kinds of contract. Okay. Okay. The first right. You see this black numbers here. These are the numbers in that section 7. Alright. I put in only the keywords. I don't explain everything because it's already in the book. Alright. I just put in the keywords for each of the rights. Each of the situation whereby you get the right to terminate. And these are the relevant section numbers in the book. For your reference. Alright. The first right, it comes from what is known as a stipulation in the contract. Stipulation in the contract. Put it simply, it means written in the contract. The right for you to terminate the contract is already given to you in the contract. So, for example, the con for example, okay, pick a, an example that you can relate to. A sale contract. For example, in a sale contract, right, the sale contract writes, if the seller does not deliver the goods, the purchaser has the right to terminate the contract. Okay, this is written in the contract. The seller agrees, sign to this. The purchaser agrees, signs to this. And then, in reality, it actually happened that the seller doesn't deliver the goods. The seller does not deliver the goods. Alright, this creates the right as written in the contract, as stipulated in the contract, from a stipulation in the contract, right, for the purchaser to immediately terminate the contract. Because it's already written in the contract. If the seller does not deliver the goods, the purchaser has the right to terminate the contract. And it really happened that the seller doesn't deliver the goods, does not deliver the goods. So the purchaser has the right to terminate the contract as according to what is stipulated or a stipulation or written in the contract. So if you think about it, okay, if you want to have a right to terminate a contract, if you worry, for example, that, okay, let's say if you are the seller in this case, if you're worried that, oh, is the purchaser going to pay me? And if the purchaser doesn't want to pay me, right, can I sell it to somebody else? I don't want to wait for the purchaser anymore. Okay, then you must get the right to terminate if the purchaser doesn't want to pay. How do you get that immediate right to terminate when the purchaser doesn't pay? Stipulate it into the contract. Right in the contract. In the event that, in the event that, the purchaser doesn't pay the purchase price. The seller has the right to terminate the contract. All right? And if in reality, the purchaser doesn't pay, then you, the seller, has the right to terminate immediately because that right is already given to you as a stipulation in the contract. All right? So if there's anything you worried about, all right, 
and if you worry about something, right, non-payment, non-delivery, okay, or the lease of apartment contract, all right, the person doesn't lease to you, lease to another person who wants to pay a better rent, okay, and if you worry that if that happens, you want to get out of the situation immediately, give yourself that right by writing into the contract. And if the other party signs to it, well, it gives you the right when that happens. All right, it gives you the right when that happened because it's already written in the contract, stipulated in the contract. The next right to terminate of a contract is the one that is most commonly arising. And that is what is you guys learn in Bas Law on breach of contract. Breach of contract. Pizzandia. Right? Breached of contract. Not beach, nah. Not tale beach. Breach of contract. Alright. Okay. Pizzania breach of contract. Now, a breach of contract is, for example, uh, somebody does not perform according to the condition in the contract. All right, so for example, if you order something from Shopee online, right, and Shopee says that the, say for example, you ordered a pair of shoes from Shopee, and Shopee says on online, on the website, that the pair of shoes would arrive to you at the latest next Friday. All right. And then come Friday, you check your mail, you check your mail, you check your post, nothing comes. Friday, nothing comes. Saturday, nothing comes. Monday, nothing comes. Tuesday, nothing comes. No shoes. Shopee has breached the contract. Now, when that happens, okay, breach of contract is actually to be more specific. It means breached a condition in the contract. Pitsandia, what it specifically means. In detail, it means pit kai kong sandia. Breach of a condition in the contract. Alright, right here. Condition. Ngan kai. Okay. A condition in the contract. Right? Condition. Right? Now, when you breach a certain condition in the contract, right? The person who suffers the breach, okay, say for example, you order from Shopee and the shoes didn't come. So you are the party that say hi, right? You suffer the breach. You suffer from the breach because your, your pair of shoes didn't come by Friday. Does this give you the immediate right to terminate the contract with Shopee? No. No. For a breach of contract, okay, you, who is the Pusia Hai, the damaged party, need to do something first. What do you have to do first? You need to provide reasonable notice on breach of contract. Notice here. Provide notice, meaning you have to give a letter, example in today's terms, an email. It has to be a notice in writing. It has to be a written notice. Nah? A written notice to Shopee, the person who caused the breach, giving that person an opportunity with a certain period to remedy the bridge. Remedy the bridge. Okay. Gag Hai Huan Pin. Remedy the bridge. You must give this opportunity. Right? The opportunity comes with a certain period. So, for example, if Shopee doesn't deliver the pair of shoes to you uh, by 
by next Friday, okay, you would give Shopee a written notice. Let's say you send an email to Shopee to say, okay, I give you another seven days. I haven't received the shoes. I give you another seven days to send me the pair of shoes. Otherwise, I would terminate the contract. If I don't receive the pair of shoes in the next seven days, in the next seven days, eh, you need to give reasonable period eh, to remedy the bridge for Shopee to remedy the bridge. If um, Shopee doesn't send you the pair of shoes in the next seven days, then, only then, you have the right to terminate the contract. So, bridge of contract or bridge of a condition in the contract does not give you the immediate right to terminate. Right? You need to give notice to the other party on the bridge and, and you need to give them some time, the other party some time to get or, or to remedy the bridge. Right? The aim of the law here on termination of contract is trying to provide some level of fairness to the other party, to give the other party an opportunity to remedy the bridge. Now, if you don't want to do this, if you think, oh, what a waste of time. If they don't deliver, I want to terminate immediately. If you want to terminate immediately, then give yourself the right. By writing into the contract. If Shopee doesn't deliver the shoes to me within the time, Shopee says that it will, which is next Friday, you have the right to immediately terminate the contract. And if Shopee really didn't deliver immediately, I didn't really did not deliver by next Friday, then you terminate the contract. Okay. The third right for termination of a contract. It can arise in a certain kind of contract. What kind of contract? A kind of contract where the performance of the obligation, right? The duty or the agreement to perform something in the contract has to take place at a fixed time or within a certain time. And this time has passed and the performance did not take place. All right, I repeat, the third kind of right to terminate a contract comes from a situation where one party to the contract agrees to perform something by a certain time. Right? Or at a certain time. And that time has passed. And that person did not perform. It will give you the right to immediately terminate the contract as well. Why is this like that? What is the aim of the law here? The aim of the law here is that the law sees that the time or the period to perform is important, very important to the contract. And after that time, if performance hasn't been carried out, the contract seems pointless. I give you a typical example for this kind of contract where time is important. For example, a contract, a construction of house contract. Right? Sanya Ko Sang Ban. The construction company enters into a contract with you. And the construction company says that it will, it will finish constructing the house by a certain date. And that date has come. That date has arrived, but you don't get your house yet. There's, the house hasn't been completed yet, or it hasn't even begun building yet. All right. This gives you the immediate right to terminate. Alright? 
if you say, ah, Ajahn, but what if I postpone the date with the construction company? If you postpone, then, then it's postponed. Then that right to terminate doesn't come because you agree to another date with the construction company. It is like agreeing to a new condition in a contract. It is like agreeing to a new condition, right? To a, to a new condition in a contract. Right. If not, right, that day to build the house come and the house is not completed or it hasn't even been built, you have the immediate right to terminate. Normally, this kind of contract comes with with a situation like you know independent contractor contract, right? Sanya Sanya Jiang Sanya Jiang pull up mao. Independent contractor contract. You employ somebody to build the house for you. You employ somebody to uh, repair the air conditioning for you. You employ somebody to write a software program for you. Right? And that person doesn't have all the time in the world to write the program for you or to repair the air for you or to build the house for you. There is a certain date. Right? And the law sees that if you have a certain date, that means the date is important for the contract. The date for the performance of the obligation or duty is important for the contract. If not, why do you fix a date? Why do you have what they call a deadline? Right? And if that date come, you don't get what you want, what you what they agree to do, or what they agree to sell, what they agree to provide, then what's the point to continue? Okay? And certain kind of independent contractor contract, time is important, very important. For example, uh, you employ, you have a contract with a bakery company to make a wedding cake. The wedding cake has to be delivered on the wedding day. If the wedding cake is delivered after the wedding day, what's the point? You see? Okay, or for example, you have a contract with a printing company to print examination booklets with questions, exam questions. Ah, the examination booklet with the question has to be deli- delivered by the exam date. If you deliver after the exam date, what is the point? Right? This is why the law says if you have a date for the duty to be performed and if you don't perform, the right to terminate arises. Okay, so this is the fourth kind of situation where the right to terminate can arise. And this is immediate, right? And the last one. This one is pretty rare, right? It happens, but it's rather rare. Performance of duty of obligation becomes impossible. Impossible to perform. No longer possible for this duty or obligation to perform. Okay, and the the cause of this is because of one party. One party did something. Normally, is it could be. It could be an, an act of negligence. Okay, it could be an action of uh, paman. Right. For example, if you look at the example I gave in the book, right, uh, on page at the bottom of page thirty. Three, right? A agrees to sell her car to B, and B agrees to pay the purchase price when A delivers the car. However, on the day before delivering the car, a fire destroyed the car, completely due to A's negligence. Negligence is pramad. A is pramad. B can then terminate the contract. Okay, because the car has already been completely destroyed by the fire due to maybe A not look, taking care, not looking after the car. Okay. Alright. If this happens, then the party who suffers the damage has the right to immediately terminate the contract. All right, this is in 7.2, 7.2B3, 7.2B3. We're going to see the word here is B, B-boy. Okay, B-ball. 
right, 7.2b3. Performance of the obligation, the duty in the contract becomes impossible due to the actions of one party. All right. This one is pretty rare. Okay. So, number two is the most common one. But take note that number two doesn't give rise to the immediate right to terminate. There must be a notice to be given to provide an opportunity, a time also, for the other party to remedy the breach. Right? If you don't want this, then write it clearly into the contract that if this, 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 this happen, you have the right to immediately terminate. Write it into the contract. And if that really happens, you have the right to terminate immediately. All right? So I that's all for the general situations whereby you can receive the right to terminate a contract. And this applies to all kinds of contract, okay? Any kinds of contract. All right, you can get the right to terminate if any of any one of these arises. Okay, that's all for this part.